Hey, let's read whenever. this. An update on the 2023 LCS summer season. There's been a lot of discussion over the past few days about North American Challenger League. I know many of you have questions about where Riot stands. So I'd like to share some thoughts as well as scheduling decision we made with the, with the goal of getting to a positive outcome. First and foremost, we support players. We also support teams and believe more than ever in the LCS. The LCS has always been a flagship league for a lot of esports and we care deeply about it. We know that everyone in the ecosystem, from the players to the teams to, the, to Riot, to everyone behind the scenes making each week possible and so many others, all share the same goals for the LCS. We need an LCS that is threatening to watch and showcase the highest levels of League of Legends play. We need a league that represents the pinnacle of North American competition, one that serves as an, as an aspirational goal for competitive players who want to build a career playing League of Legends with a clear path to the LCS. We need an eSports league that will one day bring the Summoners Cup home to North America, and we need a sustainable, economically viable, predictable league that supports a thriving ecosystem around it for the players, teams, analysts, coaches, support staff, casters, broadcast crews, and more. There's been a lot of talk about the current state of eSports, including eSports' long-term future. Over the last few months, we've been more focused than ever on meeting the team's needs for economic sustainability. But we also know the sustainability can come at the expense of having a robust, thriving development pipeline to bring fresh, homegrown new blood into the league. We're excited about what we see in the amateur and collegiate scenes, and we know we need to do more to nurture those communities and bridge the gap between them and professional scene. We also believe in the Tier 2 development system. We also know that our past efforts with LCS Academy haven't produced consistent results in terms of promotion to LCS. We believe that Tier 2 can be viable, e exciting league in its own right, and that's the next great world-class players will start their journey here. Riot has successfully architected a Tier 2 ecosystem in other major, major regions, Europe, China, and Korea, and we want to do the same for North America. It will take some shifts and trade-offs to get there. So to help the North America scene through this transition, we've decided to give our NACL partner Rally Cry an additional $300,000 in order to jumpstart the 2023 NACL season next week. What is this? What is? All right. All right, so it's just, it's just a company that runs tournaments. All right. This funding is in addition to the revenue shared to the NACL, NACL teams we you know, announced last week. Well, $300,000 is like nothing. Transitioning from the ineffective academy system to the new NACL model will help be helped by this funding. We'll also be working with LCS and NACL teams along with the LCS P8 to increase, increase upper mobility opportunities for players to the LCS, which is the ultimate goal of Tier 2 Developmental League. To make sure we live up to the quality we promised to fans, we're delaying the LCS season for two weeks. All that said, a top priority for us is always the fans. While last week we immediately put in place contingency plans to begin the LCS season on Thursday, we ultimately decided we would not hold true to our values that Rise Esport offers our players and fans a showcase for the best competitive League of Legends. Nothing but putting the best players in North America on the stage of Riot Games Arena is acceptable. So we informed the LCS PA leadership today that we will delay the LCS season for the next two weeks. So they were just full of shit. We would like to admit now that we were just full of shit. And that's it. We were trying to uh, aim this fake gun <laughs> at the strikers. And uh, it turns out it's bullet free. No, I'm, I'm, I'm streaming in English uh, for the core streams. Uh, I'll occasionally scream, stream in Polish. To maintain the novelty of it, but majority of the streams will be English. Hopefully this two-week window will give us time for productive dialogue between the LCSPA teams and the league and then resume LCS competitions this summer. The LCS will not be penalizing teams for not fielding the rosters during this two-week period to allow everyone space to focus on constructive dialogue. We're doing our best to ensure LCS employees, contractors and others supporting the LCS are not negatively impacted by the delay. Delaying beyond the two-week window would make it nearly impossible to run a legitimate competition, and in that case we will be prepared to can cancel the entire LCS summer season. Carrying this forward, if the LCS summer season is cancelled, this will also eliminate LCS teams qualifying for 2023 Worlds. I want to be clear. That is not an outcome we'd want, but it's unfortunately the reality of ensuring we run a fair, competitive global system. I also want to address the five demands from the LCSPA with the responses that we also provide to the LCSPA today. Institute Valorant-style promotion relegation between LCS and NACL. 
Expanding the league in order to implement a Valorant-style visitor slot system would run counter to our existing partnership model with the 10 LCS teams who paid 10 million per slot to compete in the league. It would dilute LCS teams' equity and put considerable downward pressure on amount of revenue, our league revenue pool that we share with the teams. More teams in the pool would dilute the revenues that we share 50% uh, with our teams under the partnership model. Given the challenging macroeconomic macro climate, expanding the league is not a good idea at this time. Whoop de woo, surprise. Riot guarantees LCS minimum contracts for the following year for five players to win NACL summer finals. I like that they took took these in the, in the order, the easiest, uh, beating them down. Guaranteed LCS contracts for winners aren't necessary component of a healthy developmental league. LCS teams are in the best position to decide who should get a shot. We'll continue to discuss initiatives to connect LCS to NACL players like we have in place with scouting grounds. Players should raise to the, rise to the LCS based on merit, potential and team fit rather than an artificially forced mechanism. And our focus will be on finding ways to increase the flexibility and mobility of that movement rather than enforcing it. Institute a 3.5 continuity rule to provide players on released NACL rosters first priority in maintaining their slots in the upcoming NACL season if a majority continue to compete together. Uh, teams provide greater continuity and structure and therefore will continue with our policy of slot ownership residing with organizations rather than players. Uh, Riot commit to a revenue pool for, for player salaries of 300,000 per NACL team per year. This ask is for multiple millions in subsidies for the NACL. That simply isn't sustainable. And to be brutally honest, it shouldn't be necessary. We have other tier 2 leagues around the world which thrive on their own and we believe the NACL can get to that place too. What we will do is help the North American scene through this transition. So as I mentioned above, we will be investing in a, bri investing in a bridge period by providing a special one-time payment of 300000 to the NACL's tournament operator Rally Cry to support the NACL teams during the transition to the new structure. Allow LCS Oaks to partner with affiliates for cost sharing. Uh, this is an interesting one. We've seen examples of partnerships between pro teams and tier 2 teams across the globe result in greater upper mobility of pros and more sustainable tier 2 ecosystems. That's why we already will continue to allow affiliate relationships too. That is why we already... Wait, they already do this? They already do this? So what the fuck? It's kind of embarrassing. It's kind of embarrassing, embarrassing then for the LCSPA. That is insanely embarrassing, by the way. That is insanely embarrassing. The LC, like, whoever's running the LCSPA, like this is, you, you just made a fool of, of yourself. I made the assumption in my video that I posted that, uh, you know, these homies were talking the truth. Because I was like, like when I, when I was talking in my video, right? I released this video yesterday. When I, when I was talking, I was like, wow, I'm so surprised that this isn't the case. That is why we already will continue to allow affiliate relationships to exist between teams in the LCS and NACL. For example, Golden Guardians and Area of Effect. Adam, that's too funny. Moving forward together, we remain hopeful that the time window now ahead of us will allow us to put in place a condensed yet competitive LCS summer season with the league's best players and teams. Thanks for taking the time to read this and look for more information from me and or other Riot leaders in days and weeks ahead. I don't know. This is pretty fucking embarrassing. I'm not gonna lie. This is so damn embarrassing. This is insanely embarrassing. I don't know. <laughs> it is insanely embarrassing. I'm not gonna lie. That is too funny, dude.